Hello, and welcome to Bite-Sized Neo4j for Data Scientists. This is part five in our series, and today we're going to talk about how to populate your database using Pandas data frames. By far, one of the most common questions that we get is how to get data into the database. So we're going to talk about a simple way to do that today. My name is Claire Sullivan, and I'm a data science advocate at Neo4j, and here's how to find me online. Okay, just a quick reminder, here we have a link on how to create our free sandbox. Today we're going to be using a blank sandbox, not the Game of Thrones one that we've been using. And then here's also links to the other videos in this series and the repository. Okay, let's dive right in. I've created a blank sandbox. I've already connected it to it uh, using our methods that we've already talked about, like in video three. And I'm just going to create a simple uh, like Twitter-like graph here. So I'm going to have users um, and I'm going to just create a data frame of them. And, and those users are going to tweet things. So let's create a data frame of those tweets. And I've got unique IDs associated with each of them. One good practice, one thing that makes life easy is if you can have a list of your nodes and have a separate list of your relationships or edges here. So now basically what I've done is I've created my node lists. I have nodes that are users and I have nodes that are tweets. Now we're going to create our relationships list. I'm going to have users that follow other users. So I have a source user um, represented by their ID and I have a target user here. So we're going to create that relationship uh, list. Cool. Now I'm also going to have users writing tweets. So my source is a user and the target is the tweet that they wrote. Okay, excellent. Now let's actually get to the database. Uh, first off, you can see I have nothing in the database right now, but we're going to create these constraints. We're going to say that our users, their ID is unique, and the tweet ID is unique. This makes for some efficient cipher for a whole variety of reasons that we do not have time to go into. I will put a link in the repository, though, to a great video on how to make efficient cipher queries. But when you actually populate databases, is one of the places that it really can go very wrong. So I definitely recommend that video. Here, I've just ha I just have a function that's going to write in batches. Um, it's not really needed for today's video. You'll see it in some of my blog posts. So we're not going to worry about it too much now. But this is just the function that handles the inserting the data in batches to the data frame or the database. Okay, now I've, I'm going to start by populating my user nodes. Okay, so here we have our cipher query that's going to do it. And you'll notice this thing here. My rows from my data frame are being passed in kind of in this list form. And what unwind does is it says to take each of these uh, rows and, and treat them individually as a row. And then I'm going to merge, which means that if it doesn't already exist in the database, put it in there. So I have a user node, and it's going to have um, my row ID is going to be the, the property of ID. And then I put my name in there as well. And I'm going to return the total count of what I just added, which is five. Correct. I have five users. I'm going to repeat the same thing for my tweets now. OK, so now I've just added 10 tweet nodes, which is good. OK, now a little more complicated. We're going to put in our relationships. Again, that data frame is coming in you know, as rows. My first thing in here is the source. Remember, row source. OK, and um, it's the ID. So I'm going to match the source user with the ID of row.source. Same thing with my target user. And then I'm going to create my relationship here as follows. I've got my source variable. And I've got my target variable, and I've got a relationship between them. OK, and I'm giving it that parameter r. And I'm going to count the number of relationships I put in there. And I can see that I've added six relationships. OK, we're going to do the same thing with writing, users who write tweets. So I have a source user, and I have a target tweet. OK, and those are both represented by the IDs of the source and the target. I'm going to put my writes in um, as my relationship. Let's run that. Excellent. I have 10 right relationships. Now let's just look and see if that makes sense. So I'm just going to go match n, and I'm going to type return n. And this is going to give me a graph showing what my, uh, what my actual graph looks like. And if you go through it, this all is correct. So I just want to again say thank you and hope to see you in the next video. Have a good weekend.